follow me on Twitter, where I write quite a lot about these things from time to time, DW2. My topic, I stuck a question mark in here. Robots will steal our jobs, probably. Uh, and I'm going to bring a futurist perspective to it. And futurism is a real thing. And it does look at social trends as well as technological trends. And over this next hour or so, we'll provide a forum on technological unemployment, where you will have a chat at four scenarios for the future of automation, four different things that various people think might happen. And the board said to this guy, I've never had such rubbish in my life. This is a ridiculous idea. Downloadable music is just a fad. Who's got to spend time with the World Wide Web? It's so slow, but in 2002 it was. Can I use some of the example of how many experts at various times were convinced that jobs were safe, and then later, as software progressed, we realized actually computers can do these jobs after yeah. all. The robots threaten 50 million. That's 50% of the jobs in the United Kingdom over the next couple of years. You haven't seen it, you probably should uh, pay attention to this company. It's doing something quite tricky now. Walking on pretty unstable ground. And you can find lots of ha 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 videos on the internet of robots falling over. But this one isn't falling over. This one has learned how to walk, runs up against some interference. It doesn't get too distracted. So, well that was a bit nasty. That was very nasty. But if you think of your sat nav, the sat nav says recalculating route, recalculating route, uh, recalculating route. You know where it's going next? From that side to the big, big wide world. And close the door. It's coming out of the door. Looks like this. And this may be the most important graph I've shown you so far. New technology proceeds in an exponential way. And it's very important. We tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run, because we forget it takes time to develop, and we underestimate the effect in the long run. What's the population? So what's happening now? What the Deep Mind program is an example of is sort of a reverse of that process. Instead of putting in the algorithm and getting the information, we put in the information, and the computer, in a sense, walks up with the algorithm. Is. All this software is called is there's a screen and you have to do something to maximize the number at the top of the screen. And it was given the same instructions for 30 different Atari games. And it managed to figure out by itself how to play all of these games, many of them very well, many of them better than any humans. It's a new technique, which none of the software engineers who programmed it had ever seen. So they thought it was a new discovery. Telling them where it came from, their reaction would be, this is wonderful music, this music touch my innermost being. And then he would say, by the way, that it's written by software, written by computers, and the audience would then get a bit angry or silent, and they say, actually, I didn't like it that much, really. It was a bit metallic, a bit robotic. So people say, now we imagine that two million odd uh, truck drivers in the US and many others in the transportation industry are at risk that all the taxi drivers are at risk, not just what he says. You know, when people can easily summon a car at any time, what's the point of owning a car? And he predicts further that private car ownership is going to go down rapidly. Because most of the people with cars, uh, the car is used only 4% of the time, and 96% of the time is parked somewhere outside. So what's happened to horses may happen to humans as well. Not that there will be fewer of us, but there'll be fewer of us doing useful jobs. And uh, any businesses who are still using humans expensively to do these tasks are likely to run out of business. All the people, the richest at the one end and the poorest at the other end, the people in the middle, their salary in America hasn't gone up in real terms since the 1970s. This is not going to last. If you don't do something to fix this, the glaring in it, in it, inequities in this economy, the pitchforks are going to come from us. Angry people. It's actually, why do we bother working anyway? You know, wouldn't the world be a happier place if 90% of the people who've got jobs today they put their feet up and left the robots to do the work, as an increasing number of people are doing? And the idea we say that people just keep slavishly working, doing something inefficiently, so they keep their jobs at a low salary doesn't make sense. It can't be the right answer. So we look instead 
to a transformation of society. Well, look my recommendations for what you should, at some stage, try to fit in to your busy lives. What you should steer your education towards in due course. And in the meantime, this is what I commend to you. So thank you very much for coming with me on this journey. And I wish you a very good, radically better future, in which automation is your friend. Thank you.